Hello everyone, my name is Juan Pablo and welcome to a new YouTube video. In this time I would like to bring you a very interesting feature that is quite useful in many search providers. And I will go through the mystery of that, <laughs> I will just tell you right away, the feature is BGP Additional Path, right? This is being used for many, many providers. Um, the objective of BGP Additional Path, and probably you already know that, is to avoid hiding path visibility in the network. So it helps the raw reflectors to send it out all the routes or all the exit points for the particular prefixes, right? And we can say that a BGP additional path help out to the, to the network to be in the hot potato routing oriented, right? And many of us will wonder, what is hot potato routing search provider? Well, hot potato routing is basically whenever a P or a device in the network wants to reach a destination and if that PE choose the best path through the network or the closest exit point, the closest ASBR, the closest border router, then this router is doing hot potato routing, right? And sometimes in a search router network, hot potato routing is not, is not always possible. Why? Let's go to the diagram and then I will explain you why BGP additional path is really useful and why this improved path visibility and obviously um, move in the flow to achieve hot potato routing in the network. So for example, let's take the scenario that we have there, right, in the diagram. So our typical MoClap one that we are getting used to those last four or five videos that I have been doing, okay? So in this case, we have ASBR1 and ASBR2, right? So those routers are in the border for the ISP James, right? ISP James uh, um, is, well, a provider that has a connection with the INET uh, part, which is the internet external connection. So let's say that ASBR1 and ASBR2, they have this interface under a BRF. We will put like BRF INET, right? Same here, BRF INET. This interface that it goes to the INET um, ISP, right? So they have a BGP session over that BRF and they exchange routes. So then, the thing is that the external network, let's say it sends a default route towards the ASBR, right? as we did in the previous video as well. So the INET uh, provider normally send a default route and then the ASBR receive the default route and then then set out to the raw reflector, right? They send out to the raw reflector that default route because those ASBR one and two, they have a VPN before session with the raw reflector and then the raw reflector has a VPN before session as well with the P1 and P2. So what's the problem with this, right? And, and what's the problem and why probably we need this feature that I was saying at the beginning, and it's the middle of the video, BGP, BGP additional path, additional path. Why is that useful? So, taking into consideration this scenario that both ASBR send a default route to the route vector, then the route vector see the default route by two paths, two exit points. The first one is the ASBR1, and the second one is the ASBR2, right? So, what's the normal behavior of our reflector? The raw reflector and every router that runs BGP, the normal behavior is to choose only one path, right? And the raw reflector choose only one path and it advertise only the best path towards the clients. So it means that raw reflector one will choose only one best path, which will be ASBR one or ASBR two, and it will send out this best path to P1 and P2, okay? So let's say a raw reflector choose ASBR one as the prefer preferable path to reach, um, to reach that particular default route. So then P1 has a default route and the next hop for that default route is ASBR1. The same for P2, the, the next hop for that default route is ASBR1, right? Perfect. Now our diagram probably doesn't help to, to, to see the distance between the P1 and, P and, and the ASBRs and P2 and the ASBRs, but what happen if from P1 to, to reach ASBR1, right? The metric of the IGP, let's say that it is 100. But to reach ASBR2, what happened if the metric for reach the ASBR2 from P1, what happened if it's 50? Because maybe the links are um, less redundant and there is an easier connection to reach ASBR2, for example, that might be the case. Or maybe ASBR1 is another side location, ASBR2 is a closer side location than P1. Either way, the fact of this is that P1 has as a next hop for the default route ASBR1. And ASBR1 is far 
than ASVR2. But even though P1 is choosing ASVR1, why? Because the raw reflector chose ASVR1. Probably for the raw reflector, ASVR1 is the closest exit point. That's why the raw reflector chose ASVR1 as a best route. And probably ASVR2, for the point of view of the raw reflector, is a bit far. So from the raw reflector perspective, probably ASVR1 is a metric of 50, but ASVR2 is a metric of 100. So from the raw reflector point of view, he chose ASVR1. But from P1 perspective, the further path or exit point is ASVR1. But even though that, the P1 receive as a best path or as a next up only ASVR1. And here we are at having suboptimal routing because P1 doesn't have visibility that there are two exit points. So first point, we don't have visibility, right? That there is two exit points. And second point, we have suboptimal routing routing you know so one leads to another right so lack of visibility triggers suboptimal routing and obviously suboptimal routing is the same as not having hot potato routing as we explained the very in the very beginning okay so how we achieve that how we achieve that p1 will have more visibility and will have a better hot potato routing well that's the feature additional path that we are talking right now right so what it does uh, additional path additional path basically will say, okay, I will send to the clients, to the P1 and P2, I will send uh, the, the best exit point from my point of view, from the point of view of error factor one, which is ASVR1, but also I will send the next best path, which is ASVR2. Or if there are many, many other exit points, I will send all of them. Or I will just say it's this one and the second best path, okay? So I am very flexible in what I want to send to the clients, right? I, I can send the best path, the two best path, three best path, all the paths. I am very, very um, chosen this, right? So then raw reflector will send it out both paths, the best path and the backup path or the second best path. And then in that case, P1 also will receive the next, the next hop ASBR1, but also ASBR2. And then P1 will have in his routing table in the BGP table, sorry, two paths, ASVR1 and ASVR2, and then it will perform the BGP best path selection. So if all the attributes are the same, the MET, the local preference weight, uh, as path, MET, um, and so it will go through the metric of the IGP. And then, because the metric of the IGP is lower in the ASVR2, then the P1 will choose ASVR2, right, as a best path. But this is because uh, we configure additional path. Without that, in this scenario, we will not be able to achieve what we are explaining now, right? Now, BGP additional path sometimes is related to BGP peak, right? Sometimes we correlate that. And for us, it's a bit different. Whenever we talk with BGP additional path, we believe that we are talking as well about BGP peak. But these are kind of different topics that work in harmony, right? BGP peak is just for doing kind of a backup route in the RIP but additional path is more for providing options visibility and in in fact this lead into uh, improving the hot potato routing we'll talk a bit more about um about bgp peak in another video so i will perform another video explaining that but for now in our lab we will achieve what we are explaining now in this case asvr1 and asvr2 are the two exit points to reach out the external network both of them are sending the default route to the raw reflector and then the raw reflector by default is just sending one path to P1. We will configure BGP additional path in the raw reflector and in the P1, and then we will see what happened. Another important thing whenever we configure BGP additional path is that this is a, a capability that you exchange between two neighbors. You know, when two neighbors are established in BGP, they exchange different capabilities, raw reflash, they change the office as well, all those stuff they are negotiating. Now, BGP additional path is also a capability that needs to be negotiated. So it means that if I enable BGP additional path in a already established BGP session, I need to perform a flapping of the session. Why? Because I need this capability to be included in that session, right? So basically, if I enable um, BGP add path in the raw factor and in P1, and I want additional path to be 
um, to be present between those two neighbors and to run a vector to send the routes to P1, then I need to reset the session. That's why whenever in a um, brownfield networks that I already have their, their structure and everything, and I want to enable BGP additional path, you must restart the session for this capability to be negotiated and to have this feature and work perfectly, okay? So we will flap also the adjacency, we will, we will see that the capability is being negotiated, and we will see that P1 is receiving both exit points, ASBR1 and ASBR2, okay? So without going more further, let's go through the CLI. So in this case, for example, we go to route vector, and the route vector is, uh, this is route vector 1, we are seeing here that um, the route vector is seeing both routes, both different routes uh, from both next hop. This is ASBR2, this is ASBR1. Now, the route vector, if we check show BGP neighbor to the ASBR, sorry, to the P1, uh, is just sending one next hop, 22, 22, 22, 22. This is the ASBR2. And this is because it's choosing the best path. So ASBR2 is the best path. So it's sending the best path only to the P1. Now, we will enable the capability. How we do that? We go under the address family and we enable the, the capability. It's important to know that additional path is being enabled per A fee, okay? So you must go under the capability and then here put in additional path. Now, the raw reflector is sending the best path and the backup paths as well. So here we should choose send because the raw reflector is sending, okay? And then once I, I um, push the, the capability in, I need to tell what I want to send. The best path and the backup, all the paths, the best path and the next two backups, how many prefix or let's say options I want to send for every particular prefix. In my case, I will send all the paths. So for that, I will create a raw policy that will send send all, okay? And then I need to create this raw policy, send all, and here set path selection, uh, all advertise okay and then if i check the configuration what i did basically is i created a raw policy that i am sending all the paths for for that particular prefix that raw factor is being receiving and um, then i am configuring the additional path in the send option because the raw factor will send the routes to the clients and then i am applying this raw policy under the api Okay, so it's important to know that this config should be per API. So I commit, perfect. Then I go to the P1, and the only thing that I need to do in the P1 is, is again, going under the AFI and put here AD, uh, additional path receive. And that's all. Commit. You believe that's all or we are missing something? You're right, we are missing something. We need to flap the session, right? And here is a command to flap the session. It's clear BGP 21, 21, 21, which is the raw reflector. I will flap from the point of view of the P1, graceful. This is a command that you normally use for flapping the session, okay? Per neighbor. Not all the sessions, but I am just flapping the session towards the raw reflector. If I check the BGP VPN before, I'm oh, sorry, then the session is being established, so it's, it's recovering, right? So we must wait a bit more. Um, but then we will see that the capability is now being negotiated. I didn't show you a thing that the capability was not negotiated, but uh, now we will see that the capability is being negotiated. So for example, if I go show BGP, VPN before, Unicast, Neighbor, 21, 21, 21, 21, and here include additional path, then under the address family, VPN before, we see that the capability additional path is being uh, negotiated and advertised and received is being negotiated as well. So it means that the P1 is negotiated capability with the raw reflector. For the other side of this family, as you can see, we don't have it because it's per API that we enable additional path. Now, if we check in the P1, show BGP VPN before, unicast, now we see two paths, right? One next hop is uh, 22, 22, 22, which is ASBR2 and the other is the ASBR one. And all of this is because we configure additional path. And again, additional path brings us this visibility completely, right? And then obviously P1 can choose and can do hot potato routing because he's aware of all the routes that exist in the session. Perfect, so this was another video about uh, additional path, 
Remember, additional path is not BGP peak. They are correlated. They work together perfectly. There are some things to consider about BGP peak as well in regards of the memory, but we'll talk this in the next video. So yes, this is additional path, and I hope that you have uh, learned something. And thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video. Ciao.